Hey guys, I'm back, welcome back to the channel, and in today's video I'm going to be doing a movie review on Top Gun Maverick. This is the second Top Gun movie released in 2022 after being delayed from 2020 and then 2021. It stars Tom Cruise, Jennifer Connelly, and Miles Teller. Uh, in this movie, after more than 30 years of service as one of the Navy's top aviators, Pete Maverick Mitchell is where he belongs, pushing the envelope as a courageous test pilot. Uh, but he is called back to Top Gun to teach a detachment of graduates for an extremely dangerous mission. Also, guys, I'm sorry this review is, is so late. Um, This film came out in the UK on May 25th, and it's June 1st now. And the Friday that I was probably going to see it, uh, May 27th, I had to prepare for a wedding. I was going to uh, the next day, and I spent the entire weekend away um, for that wedding and uh, yeah I saw it the uh, the Monday uh, afterwards after the weekend and uh, I saw it again yesterday on Tuesday uh, with my family so yeah but I finally seen this movie so let's start talking about it um so starting off with the uh, the the positives um and I have to be honest like nearly everything is is great about this film I have a lot to say in this section first of all this movie is basically a love letter to um to Top Gun fans I'm not even a huge Top Gun fan and I can respect that element of this movie I only watched the first one uh, for the first time the day before this film and I'm not like a huge fan of the first Top Gun movie so I'm not really a gigantic Top Gun fan but I can definitely respect how this movie is very much a love letter to the fans and fans are clearly loving it too right now it has a 99% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes which I'm not too surprised at that honestly there's just a lot of things here for uh for fans to enjoy and i'm um, uh yeah this is going to be like a, a fully spoiler free review so i'm not going to you know give away any uh specifics but yeah i think um fans will definitely really enjoy this this film i would say one thing i also love about this film um is that in the first top gun it was that was uh you know mostly known for its uh like amazing plane scenes uh, and stuff um and uh, the actual like drama and character elements of it w were not terrible um, they were, you know, they were all right, but like they weren't really that amazing. But in this movie, it's definitely, it's definitely improved and it's, is really amazing. And that's, um, you know, partly due to the, um, the character work on Maverick and, um, also, uh, because of Tom Cruise's performance as well. This movie has a lot of heart to put into it. Um, and definitely has improved drama elements for when its characters are not flying. Um, which I feel like the, the first movie, uh, didn't really have uh, quite as much of uh, in my opinion and as I said Tom Cruise's performance in this film is is really great um I uh, you know I think Tom Cruise has gotten better as he's gone along um I wasn't really you know like a huge fan of uh, of him in uh you know some of his older films um and I don't think he's uh, that amazing in the first Top Gun movie um but in this film he is definitely uh he's a lot better and yeah he's just he's he's such a great actor now and he's really fantastic in this film as well and the cast all around here is just great and uh you know it has a lot of new characters with the um uh, the top gun graduates uh in the film and they're all really great it balances all the characters really well um and yeah the, the whole cast has great chemistry um and yeah new characters are very good and as i said this movie has a lot of heart and there was a lot of care put into the movie um, it is uh, very emotional in the way that it, it ties back to the first Top Gun movie in a lot of ways. Um, and, uh, you know, Maverick in this film is c kind of driven by, you know, what happened with Goose uh, in the first movie for quite a lot of it. And, um, yeah, it's, it's really, really great with the uh, the emotional elements of the movie as well. So it has great drama and character elements. What about the plane scenes? Uh, the first Top Gun movie is very famous for all of its amazing plane scenes. Um, and I have to be honest, I think the plane scenes in this movie are even better. And you have a film that manages to have plane scenes better than a film that was so iconic because of its plane scenes and so groundbreaking because of them. I think you have a really great movie here. Um, and this movie sort of puts like action first, kind of. It sort of, uh, has a, a little bit more of a focus on its, um, its airplane scenes than the first one did. Um, in the first one, it sort of felt like the, um, the action and romance elements were sort of competing um, against each other, and the movie felt a bit a bit uh, uneven as a result. But in this film, uh, you know, it's more focused on action and uh, you know all the airplane stuff, and it's it's really really great. And all the action scenes, this movie, all the airplane scenes, they're so well shot, they're so well done. Uh, some truly like really like blood pumping action scenes in this film, truly intense scenes. It's it's absolutely fantastic. When people say you need to see this film on the biggest screen possible, you absolutely have to like like listen to them. I saw this film in View Extreme both times I've seen it, and it's is absolutely just worth it. Um, because you know I go to View to see uh, most of my films. Um, and like it's it's so worth seeing it on like a really massive screen. Don't see it on like a small cinema screen. Go to whatever like extreme plus premium screen that you can find and watch it on there don't see it on a small screen uh, you know like a smaller cinema screen see it on the biggest screen that you can find uh because as i said it's absolutely worth it and this movie is going to look so pathetic when it comes out on like dvd and streaming and you know physical media home media all of that it's, it's going to look so pathetic on a smaller screen 
Um, but yeah, really amazing airplane scenes in the film. Um, really great, you know, action stuff is, is all absolutely fantastic. And the movie has such a great finale as well. Again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but what a fantastic finale this film has. The film also just looks great with its cinematography and camera work and all of that. Looks absolutely fantastic, this film. Um, and you can also never feel the like, was it like two hour, 11 minute runtime? I think, I think it's, I think it's uh, around that. You can never feel the fact that this movie is, is over two hours. Yeah, you just never ever feel that runtime. Uh, and the movie is interesting and, uh, you know, is, is just great all the way through, in my opinion. So believe me when I say that it took absolutely ages for me to think of any negatives with this movie. Uh, because absolutely nothing about it, uh, when I watched it struck me that was like, like bad about it. Um, and it took me so long to think of anything I didn't like about the movie, honestly. Um, but, you know, after spending absolutely ages thinking, the only things that I can come up with are that at the beginning of the film, you know, within the, the first sort of like uh, half an hour to 40 minutes of the film, uh, there are a few scenes of talking that are a little bit long, uh, but not really. Um, and uh, But as I said, you never feel the length of the film, um, in my opinion. Um, and because the movie puts like action first, um, and, you know, it's more focused on the action than the romance, because uh, there is a romance in this film between, um, uh, Maverick and, uh, uh, another character. It does feel a little bit underdeveloped as a result, and, uh, not really, um, that focused on that much, especially, uh, you know, compared to the first movie. Um, but that's, that's kind of all I have to, yeah, that's, that's all I can think of for, for negatives with this movie, to be honest. And just a few final things, uh, you should know before going into it. Um, if you haven't seen this movie, uh, and you're going to, um, you know, uh, uh, some of you should know there are, uh, there are no post credit scenes for this movie, so you don't, just, you don't need to, uh, stick around, um, throughout the credits, because there's no post credit scene. I don't think they're gonna make a Top Gun 3, uh, but they might do, considering, uh, just how, just how successful this movie has been. Um, but there is a little thing, uh, in between, like, the, um, the initial credits and the, um, you know, the, the full credits on, uh, on the black screen. Um, and that is that, uh, the initial credits are, um, you know, the, as like text over a shot, like, uh, you know, older movies used to have. Um, and then at the end, you know, there's just a small little continuation of that shot. Um, but it's not, a, you know, there's not a post credit scene. Um, and yeah, there, it's not, a, it's not a full scene. Um, so yeah, you don't need to stick around, uh, you know, through the credits, um, cause there, there are no post credit scenes for this movie. I have to be honest, I, I wasn't expecting, uh, one and, um, yeah, I don't think, I don't know, uh, if, if anyone else was, but we live in an age where, uh, a lot of movies have post credit scenes, so, you know, just in case you wanted to know that and you didn't already, um, there you go. So, overall, I absolutely love this movie, I thought it was, it, it was absolutely brilliant, like, absolutely fantastic, I'm not even a massive Top Gun fan, and I really respect, uh, you know, how this movie is, uh, you know, uh, for the fans in a lot of ways, but it's also a brilliantly made movie, um, with its airplane scenes that are amazing, its, you know, drama and its script is all fantastic, uh, the performances are all great, and this movie overall is just fantastic. I think this is going to go down as, like, one of the, the better movie sequels, I have to be honest. I absolutely love this movie, it's definitely uh, the best of the year so far for me, and I don't think it's going to be beaten. Um, yeah, really, really brilliant. So overall, I'm going to give uh, Top Gun Maverick a 9.5 out of 10. I uh, thought it was really, really fantastic, this film. And I fully expected this to happen, uh, because there are so many positives with this movie. But there is one final positive, uh, I forgot to say, um, in the, the positive section, uh, um, of this review. Um, and that is that the score of this movie is composed by Hans Zimmer. Um, and, you know, uh, he does a great job, um, as usual. Hans Zimmer is, you know, pretty great. He did the score for No Time to Die. Um, and the, the song, uh, that plays at the end of No Time to Die, um, where James Bond dies, uh, called Final Ascent by, uh, by Hans Zimmer. Um, that there are, you know, there's some music in this film, which sounds a bit similar. Um, you know, a couple of, uh, like sort of like notes, I guess that sound a little bit similar to that song. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, um, very interesting. Uh, yeah, I hear overall he does a really good job with the music in this film. The film just has a, a pretty good score overall, um, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's really it for today's review. Um, and, uh, Jurassic World Dominion, um, when I was watching the other uh, trailers, um, for, uh, you know, when I was watching this film, uh, I realised it came out in June, but I didn't realise it was, uh, June 10th, or I guess I just didn't realise that it was, is June 1st today, so we're really close to Jurassic World Dominion, so that comes out next Friday, um, not, not this Friday, but, you know, the, the Friday after this one, um, and, uh, yeah, I will, um, hopefully be reviewing that on the Friday that I actually plan, uh, this time, um, which is, uh, you know, June 10th, the day it comes out, uh, so yeah, um, I will be reviewing that film, um, very soon so yeah thank you very much for watching this review if you enjoyed please remember to like comment share and subscribe if you want to and until next time bye bye